Hey there. In today's video, we're going to learn about the anatomy of the spine and spinal cord. In this video, we will explore the anatomy of the spine and its vital role in the human body in a simple way. Let's begin. The spine, also known as the vertebral column, is a remarkable structure that provides support, stability, and protection for our spinal cord and nerves. It consists of individual bones called vertebrae, stacked upon one another like a building blocks. This vertebrae come in different shapes and sizes. They have a bony arch that encloses the spinal canal, creating a protective housing for the spinal cord. These bones are interconnected by intervertebral discs, which act as shock absorbers and enhance flexibility. The spinal cord and nerves. Within the spinal canal lies the spinal cord. Spinal cord is nothing but a bundle of nerves that extends from the base of the brain to the lower back. The spinal cord serves as a communication pathway, which transmits sensory information from the body to the brain and transfer motor commands from the brain to the muscles. The pairs of spinal nerves emerge from spaces between the vertebrae, carrying messages to and from different regions of the body. At the bottom of the spinal cord is the cauda equina, a collection of nerves that derives its name from the Latin translation of horse's tail. Early anatomists thought the collection of nerves resembled a horse's tail. Spinal cord blood supply. The spinal cord, a crucial part of our central nervous system, relies on a rich and intricate network of blood vessels to sustain its functions. These blood vessels ensure the delivery of oxygen, nutrients, and other essential substances to the spinal cord tissues enabling it to carry out its vital tasks. Arterial blood supply. The arterial blood supply to the spinal cord primarily comes from two major arteries, the anterior spinal artery and the paired posterior spinal arteries. The anterior spinal artery runs along the front surface of the spinal cord, while the posterior spinal arteries are located on either side towards the back. These arteries give rise to smaller branches that penetrate the spinal cord's outer covering, known as the meninges. These branches then further divide and form a dense network of tiny blood vessels that intricately weave through the spinal cord's gray and white matter. Segmental arteries. In addition to the major arteries, segmental arteries also contribute to the blood supply of the spinal cord. These arteries originate from various levels of the aorta, the body's largest artery. They send branches to the spinal cord, providing additional sources of oxygenated blood. The segmental arteries enter the spinal canal through openings between the vertebrae, and their branches merge with the existing arterial network within the spinal cord. Venous drainage. As blood circulates through the spinal cord, it needs a way to return to the heart and lungs for oxygenation. Venous drainage is facilitated by a network of veins that accompany the arterial supply. These veins converge into three main channels, the anterior spinal veins and the paired posterior spinal veins. These spinal veins run alongside the spinal arteries and collect deoxygenated blood and waste products from the spinal cord. Eventually, the blood from the spinal veins joins larger systemic veins and makes its way back to the heart for reoxygenation. Cerebrospinal fluid, cerebrospinal fluid, CSF, surrounds the spinal cord, which is also shielded by three protective layers called the meninges, dura, arachnoid, and pia mater. Cerebrospinal fluid, CSF, is a clear, colorless body fluid found within the tissue that surrounds the brain and spinal cord of all vertebrates. CSF occupies the subarachnoid space between the arachnoid mater and the pia mater, and the ventricular system around and inside the brain and spinal cord. The natural curves of the spine. The spine has three natural curves, the cervical curve in the neck region, the thoracic curve in the torso, torso is an anatomical term for the central part of the body, and the lumbar curve in the lower back. These curves help distribute forces evenly, absorb shock, and maintain balance, reducing the risk of injury. The cervical spine, neck. The cervical spine consists of seven vertebrae located in the neck region. These vertebrae provide support for the head, allowing it to rotate and tilt. The first two vertebrae, called the atlas and axis, have unique structures that enable smooth movement and protect the spinal cord. The thoracic spine. The thoracic spine consists of 12 vertebrae that connect to the rib cage. These vertebrae provide stability for the upper body, 
and protect the vital organs within the chest. The thoracic spine has less mobility compared to other regions, but allows for some rotation and bending. The lumbar spine, lower back. The lumbar spine is located in the lower back and consists of five vertebrae. These vertebrae are the largest and strongest in the spine, providing support for the upper body and facilitating movements like bending and lifting. The lumbar spine bears a significant amount of weight and can be prone to stress and injury. The sacrum and coccyx. At the base of the spine, we find the sacrum and coccyx. The sacrum is a triangular bone formed by the fusion of five vertebrae. It connects the spine to the pelvic bones and provides stability for the pelvis. The coccyx, also known as the tailbone, consists of four fused vertebrae and serves as an attachment site for ligaments and muscles. Okay friends, that's all about today. It is just an overview of spinal cord anatomy. If you want to see more videos like this, make sure to subscribe to our channel. We have exciting content coming up and we'd love to have you as part of our community. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.